Hunter Raymond, drums. Kill Beal, guitar, and uh, vocals. You started the band back in 2008 in your hometown of Calgary, Alberta. And what was it like back in Calgary at that time? A lot more partying than playing music, to be honest. <laughs> Calgary was like, it's like the whole scene there, the whole metal scene is a totally different thing than what we were doing. It was just no scene for old school, like the kind of stuff we were doing. Um, did you play shows in Calgary's Mallet? No, we, we only just jammed. We could never get a full band together because of uh, kind of the way people were. They just kind of jammed in my house and got drunk as fuck all the time. <laughs> That's where uh, Caleb wrote Pray for Death, though. Carried it over, keep playing it now. Yeah, so it's pretty sweet. Used to jam that way back. So how messed up the scene was there for what we were doing. I came out just to kind of check it out. After the first time I came here, I saw a show at the Bovine, and I was like, wow, this is totally crazy. Yeah, it convinced me to come right away. Yeah, like <laughs> people that are actually into this shit here. In 2010, Malice were invited to be one of the headliners of the Noctis Fest. Uh, what was that like being able to return home with a band at such a large event such as Noctis? Yeah, it was, <laughs> that's about all I can say. It was just that. awesome because uh, we never did fuck all when we were there, really. I mean, we just we were these hammered dudes just fucking pissed everywhere. So <laughs> coming back and doing anything at all was really sweet and then we lucked out. See, we did it, man. We did something, at least, <laughs> if anything. How did uh, the set for Noctis go? Awesome. Played way too fast though, but it was really fun. I puked twice on my high hat. <laughs> I don't even remember it, but it, the pictures look good. You're pretty stoked to be returning with your uh, new album, Proving Grounds, out? Oh yeah, really excited. It should be a blast. I'm really excited, actually. Can't wait. It just took so long uh, to get anything out at all, and we kind of had that demo out for fucking Way too long. Two years or something. It was awesome. Absolutely legitimate. A legitimate release. It uh, was professional quality. How has uh, the response to the new record been? It's awesome. People are really digging it, man. And I think, uh, I think they're into you know the change in our sound from the demo and just from what a lot of other people are doing. It's set us apart a bit. Open some doors. Sure. What was the writing process for the songs on the record? Some of the stuff we write uh, together when we have like Blinder was just kind of riffs that we put together when we were jamming and it was just worked out. Caleb does a lot of writing by himself and then he brings it to us. Uh, the album was recorded in Toronto with producer Ian Blurt. Uh, what was it like working with Blurt? Uh, he was totally awesome to work with. He, uh, yeah. he supplied a lot of the gear we were using as well and had a uh, input on as to like what kind of effects we were using on things. Totally like whipping our ass. <laughs> we were all terrified of him. We were releasing it uh, in Japan under uh, Spiritual Beast on May 14th, I think. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's what we're <laughs> now. Accompanying the release of the new record for 2014, you uh, saw the departure of Jared Verlage, your bass player, on the record. The former Anvil bassist, Glenn Five, uh, played your CD release show in Toronto on April 5th. Craig Rose got in contact with uh, Glenn Five did it as a favor. We are all really stoked he did it because that was amazing. It was a great show. What's it been like rehearsing with G5? Oh, it was fun. <laughs> I'll just leave it at fun. <laughs> you, you never really know what you're getting in and like involved with new people. And the guy's like a pro and he's been around for so long like you have no idea what his attitude towards things are. And he totally like fit right in and was totally down to rage with us fucking hard. He, yeah, he's a boy. He was texting <laughs> me this weekend telling me that he was uh, and withdrawals from Malice and wanted to know where we were fucking partying. <laughs> <laughs> what early musical influences made you pick up uh, a guitar or made you play drums? Punk music, like GBH, Subhumans, random shit like that. Then slowly evolved into like Wasp and Monty Crew and Motorhead and Juice Priest and just list go on from there, man. Yeah, I used to actually play drums when I was, uh, first started out in punk bands in Calgary. And one of the bands I played in when I was probably around 13 or 14, I had this weird singer dude named Nigel and he introduced me to Wasp. He showed me the song Love Machine. I can't remember how it came up and I was totally blown away that music like that existed. What was your first guitar, your first drum kit? This dirty blue PV kit. It was like 500 bucks. Broke it in like two months. And now I still have the same greasy Mapex. I, totally, <laughs> I, I guess my first guitar was a Jackson KVX2. It was fucking sweet V. What were early visions uh, for the sound of Malice? I don't know. I think that was one of the things that we never really were yeah. like trying to sound like something specific. I mean, we were listening to a lot of uh, 
Or I was just a lot of XYZ and Rat and stuff like Doc and really greasy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't say we sound anything like that. I mean, if I wanted to say I wanted to sound like something, it'd be in a Wasp kind of sound, but I don't think we sound like them really. Yeah. So well, what kind of music do you, are you guys listening to? Like, what's what's the last thing that you guys put on? Casually to listen to. I just listened to the album Lucifer's Friend, <laughs> Lucifer's Friend, but no one knows that. But just check it out; it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was listening to Billy Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like two of the new songs we're writing. One is about uh, trying to not drink. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's not like Homer. But it's like one of the new songs I was writing is about. Uh, like totally fucking trying to not drink and how evil fucking booze and drugs and stuff are in your life and then another song that I wrote right after is about just fucking getting wasted and partying. <laughs> so it all depends on major and I guess. I mean, checks and stuff. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find your sound kind of extends beyond playing with heavy metal bands? Yes, definitely. I believe we play in a bunch of different scenes and still yeah, get well, good recognition. I mean, we have. I mean, we, we play yeah. Montreal and stuff. We play this greasy fucking punk place. We just play a rock and roll show, random rock and roll show. Yeah. We can play a heavy metal show. We're going to go play a death metal show. Like, we can play almost anywhere. Where does a typical Midnight Malice live show fall in, in terms of a night on the town? Like, uh, what, what could you expect going You're to one of your shows? You're not going to bed for at least 24 hours. <laughs> 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 well, we aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Late night party. <laughs> There's a lot of attention for Midnight Malice coming out of Japan. It's not only for the new record, but the demo as well. Would you guys be into playing in Japan? Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So awesome. There's been people from here that have went down. It just looks really awesome. I've always kind of wanted to play Japan. I just never knew that it was a possibility at all, so it's awesome to be getting attention from there, for sure. And he's been talking about playing Japan since I met this kid, so... <laughs> <laughs> if that happens, his dream is fucking... How has the reception been playing in cities like Montreal and Ottawa? Growing fast. Yeah, I mean, we've been to <laughs> Montreal, I think, like four or five times now, and we started out playing, I don't know, I think it was Hemisphere Ghost was the first show we played there. I'm not sure yeah. where that is there, but it's not really central. And the last show we did there, we played with uh, Metallion at... Uh, catacombs. Yeah. Pull up Catacombs. And it was yeah. awesome. A much larger venue, and we're actually going back to play with Grim Reaper. Uh, yeah. It was actually really sick. It was really packed. That Metallion show was really packed. It was awesome. So, June 12th. June 12th. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, is touring something you guys would like to do more of as a band? Yeah, definitely. Keep me on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've made, like, total huge leaps and bounds forward in the last two years getting shit done and now it's kind of becoming more of reasonable and more possible than ever how often do you guys rehearse we try to at least three times a week at least generally end up with one or two <laughs> it depends we get tighter closer show what do you guys uh do in in toronto in parkdale on nights off and there's no shows or no parties or anything like that and hang out. A lot of weed. <laughs> Smoke buckets and fucking hang out with Rose. Craig Rose. Rose management. <laughs> who, who is Craig Rose? <laughs> the boss. The man that keeps everything together. The glue of malice. Who <laughs> would say that? The glue of malice. Craig kind of came in uh, a couple years ago and it was he just kind of started helping us out of uh, his own goodwill. Uh, he was helping us put shows properly just because we were such a fucking mess. And uh, eventually we kind of were just calling him our manager and he took up the reins. And uh, he, uh, he does all our booking and deals with people that I tell the fuck off. What are you trying to do this year? Uh, this year we're just going to keep pushing the album. We're booking on a bunch of dates throughout the summer and all over Canada. I guess it's work towards getting another album done for next year. And, so we get enough exposure to get out yeah. to Europe and Japan.